Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the five minute read maker. Um, listen, if you're watching this on YouTube, can you go ahead and click subscribe? Um, that way, uh, you'll always know when I drop new episodes, uh, other people will have an easier time finding this channel and thus they like you will make better reads and, uh, be happier oboists and everyone will win. I'm responding today to a an email that I got not that recently from David, who is asking about the structure of the cut-in, the transition from the heart into the tip. Um, not about the rooftop necessarily, right? That's a separate issue that is sometimes steeper and sometimes shallower, but actually about if this is your thick heart and this is your thin tip, what gets you between those things? Um, and so I try to answer in this uh, video. I've seen a variety of ways of doing this, um, and I have some opinions about what I like. Maybe your opinions are different. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so I wanted to spend a minute or two talking about the structure of the rooftop, and I do not mean here the steepness or shallowness of the roof itself, that's a separate issue. I mean the way that the thick heart transitions into the thin tip. This is to do with the cut-in, of course. This is also to do with the uh, sort of almost invisible shadow rooftop that you can see when you backlight a reed. I find that the smoother the transition from the thin tip into the thick heart, the heavier the reed actually feels. You can see that there, that there is, in fact, a transition here, because I couldn't help myself, but I tried to keep it as smooth as possible. Um, and I found that I had to clip back, clip back, clip back, clip back to get to balance. And as a result, um, my tip is a little bit heavy, my heart is a little bit thin, because I was so focused on this blend area. And what I find when I start to blow in this reed is that the entire reed has to start vibrating before it vibrates, because there's very, very little stop here. There's nothing to separate the tip from the heart, and therefore the reed doesn't vibrate until the whole thing vibrates. So I'm working pretty hard to create that crow, the uh, the crow of the of the heart comes in pretty pretty slowly after the beep of the tip, and I have to work hard to get to it. When I put this on the oboe. that um, it's easy to get to the center of the note right away. The articulation is not that difficult, but the whole thing feels open to me, um, feels a little bit over resistant in general and, and very heavy. The next thing that I often see is people who make their rooftop, uh, make the transition very stark and the tip very thin, sort of uniformly thin. That would be this guy, which I intentionally cut down very hard, right in that area. And what I find uh, with these is that it's very easy uh, for the reed to start vibrating because the tip vibrates all by itself um, that the crow comes pretty easily afterwards because again the the purpose of this stop here at the rooftop is to allow the tip to start the vibration easily and then we need to allow the, the vibration to move into the heart. is super easy to play. It is absolutely no problem. The crow, uh, as you heard, is a nice C. <laughs> um, what I dislike here is that I feel like there's a little bit of a lack of subtlety in the sound. It's almost too easy, and I believe that that comes from the uh, lack of 
structure within the tip here in the middle. And the third version of this, uh, which is what I generally try to go for when I'm making my reeds, is this skateboard ramp, right? Um, I'm not looking for a wheelchair ramp like this upper version, and I certainly don't want a curb like this version where your skateboard might just get boop, stuck. Um, but I do like a skateboard ramp to enable those vibrations to come easily from the tip into the heart. And let's take a look here. And this enables me to have a fair amount of shadow within the tip. Um, a fair amount of sort of invisible structure, two-dimensional shadow rooftop within the tip. Again, the beep comes easily. The crow is feels a little bit more resistant than this one, but not nearly as resistant as the as my previous version. to me here is how much this version of the rooftop slows those vibrations. Uh, I tongue and then I have to push a little bit more. Um, for me, this extra resistance that's built in within the tip that makes my articulation slow down a little bit is a good thing. I like it. It's not necessarily something that you also like. It could be that you prefer to have a much steeper cut in here so that the articulation, so that the response of the reed is more effortless. It could be that you want something more like this, where the whole reed is acting together much more. Um, these are choices that you get to make as you're making your reeds. These are the differences that I feel in the reeds. This has been a five minute read maker lesson. You can follow these short videos here on YouTube and uh, subscribe if you wish, I hope you will. Um, you could find me at JanetIngle.com to order reads or cane, to join my weekly read club, to uh, reach out to me and let me know what my next short video should address for you and what questions you have about oboe read making. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.